Okay, so I had the um, fantastic opportunity to meet Tristan through my niece, Kaz, who had um, contacted him before. She recommended that I go and see him because I have some issues in my life that I'm trying to work through. And just over two weeks ago, I came down to beautiful Mullumbimby and went out to Wilson's Creek Road. That's right. yeah. Gorgeous place he's got. Very calm, very peaceful, very welcoming, very much like Tristan himself. Um, we sat, we talked, we drank a lot of tea, <laughs> went through a lot of issues that I really can't remember the whole conversations now. The main two issues that I have, which is quite good for tonight, was anxiety, lots of anxiety, which I'm feeling at the moment, <laughs> and a drinking problem, which I've had most of my adult life. Um, long story short, um, he asked me after a couple of hours of conversation probably if I would like to undergo a small regression to take me back to see if we could work on the energy and the time that was causing these problems the worst for me, especially the drinking. Um, he called me very brave for doing it, but <laughs> I put myself in his hands and uh, it was quite an experience, a little scary, I must admit, um, but I am so, 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 so glad that I did it and went with it and let you lead me through that. Um, I still don't know what caused it, he wouldn't tell me. <laughs> um, and he told me that it didn't matter, it was the energies that were involved and that's what we were working on. And I came away from there and as I drove away I realised I didn't have that knot in my belly. It was gone. The anxiety that I'd been feeling building up for weeks and months, getting worse and worse and worse, had just gone. It was amazing and I can't thank you enough for that. And I haven't had a drink. I hadn't been drinking for a couple of weeks before that, but it was a struggle. I don't need to drink. I don't want to drink. I know that I can go to the pub and order myself anything that I want. And I don't have to. I don't need to. I don't want to. And I can't thank you enough for that. I really can't. Because with clarity now, I can go forward and start really working on myself and working on issues. And I am hoping to be able to do that a lot with you in the future as well. And I can't recommend his help, his assistance, his leadership. His, I don't know what you want to say to it. I say to people when they ask me what Tristan's like, I, I can't explain. He's like a spiritual counsellor, somebody that you go to with your problems. He has absolutely no, what's the word? He, he doesn't judge you, he just helps you and I love them, <laughs> and thank you. So that's, that's, that's me done, thank you. not a problem. Thanks. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> okay, awesome. I'll go and sit down and stop shaking now. <laughs> you did great. It's funny you think, you're thanking me and it's like, well, you, you did all the work, it's, I, just, I was just hanging out, you know. <laughs> Okay, so there's um, some kind of term fell into my head a few years ago and um, I call it zero point innocence and it's um, when you make up a term it's called coining, <laughs> a coined term. So something I talk about a lot is zero point innocence and this is an idea that when we start working on issues like more here that we become more innocent. And this allows us to start connecting with people from a more innocent state. And the, the example I use is and you get two little kids and you introduce them to each other and they're just like, yeah, sweet, they just go play. You know? But we don't do that as adults. So we meet a new person, we're like, oh, I kind of like this person, but we're kind of weary and they might be kind of weary. And why are we weary of other people? We're weary because we have defensive mechanisms in our nervous system telling us to watch out, you know, to, to basically try and reduce the chance of a negative event happening to us again. So, like, say you got, you know, you go through a terrible breakup and it was bad, and maybe your partner did something nasty to you, and you meet like this new prospective partner, but you're going to be wary because your nervous system is telling you not to get hurt again and to be, 
you know, cautious about trusting this person. So the more we work on these issues in our past, the more we can approach an innocent state. And it's a very powerful, creative place to be. And that's why I call it zero point innocence, like zero point energy. So it's coming right back to what we used to be like when we just wanted to play. You know, there's no reason why we can't do this as adults. And it's a very incredible, creative place to be in, in our sexualities and in our, in our intimate relationships and in our families. You know, so it's, it's an amazing, and you do meet people like that. Um, I met a Tibetan Lama recently, and he's 80. And he's like, I just feel like a little kid, you know? And he has these, he has, he has these minders who kind of keep him out of trouble, really, because he's just like, he's just like, he's, 80, he's like a little kid, you know? So it's, you, you meet people like that who are approaching that, that zone. So a lot of the information um, I'm going to be talking about tonight, we come up against all these roadblocks when we listen to new information in particular, because essentially these roadblocks are in our, um, our belief systems or disbelief systems, where we, we think we know what we know and that we're right and that we know what's going on. And you're going to come and get up against these roadblocks. It's really fascinating with clients too. When I talk about particular things, you can get up to the edge of someone's belief system and you can just tell with their energy when they you're up against the edge of the belief system and they start to become uncomfortable. But if you just barge through someone's belief system, then they'll get angry. Um, this is especially common with, um, say, doctors and scientists because let's say you spend 30 years doing research and you kind of create this theory and then some new person arrives who just proves you wrong. But you've, done, you've done, got all this research there and you've put all your life into it that you associate your ego and your identity with what you're actually um, saying. So anything that um, discounts that, you have to, um, a lot of people will just reject it. And this is called um, cognitive dissonance, where you just actually can't cope or deal with something um, that flies so intensely in the face of your belief system that you just pretend it doesn't exist, or you become angry. So the whole other realm of that is to listen with your body and to listen with your heart. Our body consciousness is far more linked to this kind of collective Akashic awareness of human knowledge. And when we listen with our hearts, we can actually kind of bypass that analytical overlay that's going to be constantly interpreting and crunching through all the information. And when you turn that off and listen with your body, it's really incredible because then the, um, your awareness and the way we learn is going to start um, happening inside your body consciousness as opposed to your mind. And when you learn something in your body, your ability to um, reiterate and regurgitate that information is, is really incredible because you're not having to think, you know? And this is what you can kind of almost call like a spiritual ver verification. If someone says something and you go, yep, but the yep is coming out of your heart, you know, and it's, it's a really special thing. So be mindful of that. So the more we work on ourselves, the more we become sensitive. And the more we become sensitive, the more we can um, really help the planet. Um, a lot of people are really quite numb and unvulnerable and not going through their emotions. And, um, you know, you can tell your body to become numb, it'll just, it'll just do it through your own psychopharmacology. And becoming sensitive is hard because you're going to start noticing things. Your microwave might start to make you feel weird, you know, and, you know, your, your computer might start to make you feel weird and certain people might start making you feel weird. And this is more your body starting to tell you that you need to make some changes. But you're going to go through discomfort first. So becoming sensitive allows you to notice discomfort on a finer level for growth, you know, there's that great analogy with the crayfish, you know, when the crayfish feels uncomfortable, it knows that it's time to grow. And it goes under a rock and it sheds its shell and it grows a new shell and it gets bigger. But the discomfort it's feeling is the, is the signal for growth. So it's the same with us, you know, if something makes you uncomfortable, it's like, why does that make me feel uncomfortable? And maybe it's time to grow in a particular way. And the next level after that is really kind of starting to tune in with what the nature of the universe really is and what that really means. The word universe kind of just, um, it's a nice word for everything. And um, the basic nature of the universe is playfulness. The universe is almost, you can so it's like it's musical. Um, the whole thing with music, Alan Watts has got a good analogy. Music is a really good way of understanding um, being in the now. You get your favorite song. And the way we think about life in general is to get to the end of things, get to the end of work, get to the end of the day, get to the end of school, get the, finish university, finish all these things, you know, f f whatever we're working, we're always thinking about the end. But when you're going to play your favourite song, you're not thinking, oh, I'm going to get to the end of my favourite song. You're thinking about, oh, I like that bit there and that bit there. It's like a dance as well. 
You know, you don't dance around a ballroom trying to get to a particular spot in the ballroom. It's about doing the dance to get there. So the basic nature of the universe is like that, that playfulness, dancing, music. And we're not, we're supposed to sing and dance while the music's being played. Okay, and a lot of people get to the end of their life trying to get to the end of something and they weren't singing and dancing while the music was playing. And they kind of get to the end and go, oh, it's like, it's like there was a big joke. You know, I didn't, no one told me. Because we're constantly encouraged to look at the next thing, look into the future as opposed to being in the now. So a lot of the information I'm going to be sharing is more, um, especially tonight, it's more masculine. It's more related around science. And we are in a society where it is very fashionable to have a scientific status. People kind of operate in science now when it comes to information. If I talk to you just about visions that I've had, you know, in my dreams, it's not going to really relate to a lot of people because we are more trained to only believe things that have been read off a pie chart by a doctor. You know, so it's like um, a lot of this, you know, it's masculine information, scientific information where it's like really kind of crunching ideas and research and going, oh, okay, cool. So you can like look at really masculine research into quantum physics and go, oh my God, like, you know, we're all one, for example. But the actual research to get there is very masculine. So this gives people a lot of opportunities to heal and evolve via information. You know, with some people who are not in that world, a lot of people on this, on this planet are not in that world of needing information to heal. It all, everything just comes in. Everything just comes in. You can go, you can learn a lot more by walking through a forest if you're in the right sensitivity than going to university for two decades.